So, what do Actually, you guys want to do? Well, here's a thought about what I could potentially do. Given that we are in the middle of a time-sensitive situation, I could maybe stop trying to resurrect this shark, and maybe do some kind of combined action with Chris in order to uh, get this device dismantled as fast as possible. Sure. Sure, I don't see why not. Okay. Uh, uh, Thank you. Uh, Chris, for those ends, I'm going to attempt... I don't have science, so I guess this would just be a straight mind check of rattling off as much as many little things as I've learned about possibility energy in all my couple of months in the possibility wars fighting Lurks Underground, which is basically all the band oh, was yeah. doing until he met you guys. Oh my goodness, yeah. Okay. So I'm just going to... Alright, I'm just going to go roll mind then. Yeah, roll your mind. The target number is a 12. Uh, I don't know if I was trying to do this outright. I guess I can. Yeah. Alright, I'm spending a possibility. Okay, okay, what was your original roll? Put it in the chat, please. It was no It was nine. It actually set up there. Mm -hmm. Because I don't have my token on the board, I will roll the possibility die on, on physically. Why are you very stymied? Oh, that should have worn off by now. Oh, yeah, been. yeah. Yes. You guys should not be very stymied uh, anymore. In that case, it should be, um, if it's a roll of nine, it let me... a ten. Yep, let me roll the possibility. Okay. All right. Possibility die was a 17. Okay. So, oh, wait a minute. That was the actual roll on the dice? So, uh, 17, 26 total? Is that what you're telling me? Yeah. Okay. So 26 hey, total is going to be a plus 9. You're going to remove whatever mini eternity shard they're using in there. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I think you're doing that wrong. He's That's his roll of 17. That's so his past roll. Plus, plus okay. 9. Well, hold on. Hold on, guys. Hold on. So, Josh, the die roll that you made after you spent the possibility came up a 17, correct? Yes. Or is that the nine plus whatever you roll? No, it's the seventeen. The seventeen is what came up on the possibility die. Okay, so that came out to be a total of twenty-six, which gives you a plus nine on the bonus chart. So, okay. what is your? Uh, so you've got an eleven for mind, plus nine. That's twenty. Okay. Um, let's see. How are we gonna do this? Um. Okay, Chris, when we get to you, you're going to be allowed to add five to your dice roll. Okay. okay. Um, that's because Thuban comes up with all kinds of really good information for you. A uh, bonus of plus five or... A, a bonus of five to your roll. Okay. So when, when, you, when it comes to you, are you going next, or do Peaches or Mo want to go next? I'll, I'll go now. Okay. Uh, yeah. That's fine with me. I mean, I, I, I think me and Peaches are just fighting. We're not really helping with that at all. No, I'm trying to catch up with you. Uh, eventually, I'll be able to okay. join the I'm going to run to the bathroom now that I've done my Here's thing. Question. Okay, thank <laughs> you. Can I do it for, a, for all you guys? Should I make this a multi-action of both B and C, or just do B? Do B and C. Let's. We need to get this light taken care of as quick as possible. Okay, and the, the numbers are not going to be smaller. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, and and you've got a pretty substantial bonus right now, so go right. ahead and take advantage of it. So this would be on my mind, right? Because uh, no, be my your, your profession, aerospace engineer. Yes. Okay. Okay, so that's it. <laughs> Air, for aerospace engineering is very much like weird science. Airplanes okay. are not supposed to be able to fly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so... You should have took theoretical physicists. 
Uh, that wouldn't have helped him here. <laughs> uh, so, my, it's my total scale plus the modifier, correct? Okay, so what, what, did, what did you roll on your dice? 18 plus the 5 would make it 23. No, that's not how it works. If you rolled an 18 on your dice, okay, okay. then that gives you a bonus of 5. Okay, so... Uh, but you, didn't you say I was also getting the bonus of 5 from the band? Not to your dice roll. To your total. You just said it to the dice roll. Huh? You said uh, to the dice roll itself. No, to the total. It has to be to the total. So you rolled an 18 on the D20, right? Okay. Okay. So that gives you a plus 5 to your aerospace engineering skill, which is already a 13. So 13 plus 5 is 18. And then 18 plus 5 is 23 for what Thuban was able to help you with. Oh, okay. good God. Okay. But my way seemed. Because for what I heard of you, you were saying it's plus 5 to my roll. No. And I was thinking, you, okay. So did you only okay. roll a 13 or did you roll an actual 18? I rolled an actual 18, okay. and I was thinking of adding the, you know, plus, yeah, 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 yeah. So, you have an outstanding success for step B. So, hang on a second. I'm saying we'll take action for B and C. Yes, I know, but we're, we're completing things one step at a time. Okay. So, hang on just a second. That's step B. Well, actually, I want to put it in a pill. So, get over there. Uh, I want to put it down to two. That's what happened. Okay, so I know what happened now. Okay, so that can go here, because you've completed that. And then step A, go or step B, goes here. Would you get smaller? Thank you. Okay, so that's step B. Now... 23 minus 2 is 21, so your science, uh, you passed the science of 14 um, by 7. So that is still a good success. All right. Um, so let's see. There was a specific button to stop collecting possibility NG, and there was a specific button to reverse it. Yes. Press the oh. Now, do you want to stop there? Let's go all the way. Okay, so let me get your step C down here. And... Oh, yeah, like so. No, you... Okay, so that's Thank step you, C. Baca. Sure. Um, <laughs> and then set the infernal machine to overload which requires a science or mind of 16. Now, you had a total of 21. Minus 2 is 19. So that's going to give you a standard success on that, but it is a success. So that's D. So two rounds, and you've got this done. Kiss my butt. <laughs> <laughs> I told that there's something humans do called a high five. <laughs> I guess I'll be giving it to you one when we get up there. Which uh -huh. tentacle should I use for that? I don't think you want to use any tentacles for that. I'm manipulating the bandage. Yeah, that would be one of your small ones. Got it. Okay. So that's it. That's it. For some reason, you did your study in step A, and then you were able to stop the machine from collecting the possibility energy, and you, you see wisps of blue smoke coming from the environment. Have you guys ever seen uh, Riddick? The uh, yes. Chronicles of Riddick, okay? The nope. the the ghost machines that they've got up there, the the uh, oh, what did they call those guys? The, the death machine things, whatever. It's been a long time since I've seen the movie. Uh, anyway, those machines collected in kind of this black dust stuff. Well, in this case, they're actually collecting uh, the the machine. The infernal machine is actually collecting kind of a a blue mist, which you would recognize from losing some of it yourself. Um, so oh, you're saying that from the top of this uh, machine, a giant cloud of blue, you know, dark blue. Uh, burst forth with a 
red arcs of lightning streaming through it. Uh, as a matter of fact, that is an excellent way to describe it. Um, the entire seabed and the, the ship sitting upon it um, uh, is suddenly struck with multiple hundreds of lightning bolts, red and blue lightning bolts, and the machine starts spewing out this grayish uh, blue uh, dust, if you will, that is sparkling underwater. Um, and it, it kind of starts to flow out in very steady streams, almost like rivers, away from the machine to various parts of the world. Um, and it, it disperses after probably about 20 or 30 seconds worth of, of work, okay? Then the machine begins to kind of melt down. By this time, Chris, I'm, I'm sure that you're kind of backing away from the machine. You recognize it's doing what it's supposed to do. Um, but as it keeps doing it, uh, the pirate ship itself and the pirates begin to disappear in flashes of blue and red, much like what happened to your friends in the Living Land uh, Day 1 adventure. Okay? Um, they, but these ones all have possibilities, and the possibility energy actually gets sucked into the machine from these guys. Thuban. So what I'm imagining is mm -hmm. that as it slowly goes along with you know red and blue lightning striking everything, mm -hmm. it then slowly turns into fellow also blue dust and sucking towards the machine. Yes, from the bad guys. Okay. Um, Thuban, you actually hear a very familiar voice in your head screaming. It sounds like a distant scream, but it's screaming nonetheless. Oh, you wanted to share knowledge. I'm glad I could teach you about failure. <laughs> oh! <Nice. laughs> and, and, and the voice comes back, you bastard! I'll get you for this, 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 this. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Suddenly, um, as the lightning kind of starts to, to, to flicker away, to, to it, it reduces until it's gone, um, and the seabed is darkened again, all of the lights on your suits kind of brighten up again, and you can see around you that you no longer have any opposition whatsoever. In fact, the, the silt of the seabed is gone, and you are standing on rocks. Okay? The pirate ship has collapsed in completely on itself right after Chris cleared it. Okay? So I'm here. here. Yeah. Yeah, you're yeah, you're over there somewhere. And and of all of the winds and turbulent seas and all that kind of pushed me out and me backing away, you know, wisely. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Exactly. Um now <laughs> the 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 remainder of the ship finishes collapsing uh towards the rocks and it does leave a kind of a cloud a, a roiling cloud of dust going away from it. One more thing happens, however, and here's here's what I want each of you to do. I need each of you to roll a a strength test. Even me up on the uh, plane? Uh, no, not you. You're you're okay. Um, okay. However, Jacques falls into the water, um, and starts kind of splashing about. I'm gonna try and grab him and pull, hoist him back up. Okay. Are we all still at minus one strength and minus one depth because yes. of the? Okay. Oh yes, you're you're still in the suits. That's yeah, yeah, that's not a problem. Okay. So, so is this a strength check to haul him up? No. Okay. Oh no. So Ginger failed. Yeah, completely. Okay. Oh well, no. It's not a it's it's not a, a disconnect or anything. Okay, Mo failed. Chris. I rolled a three, which is minus six, and my strength right now is six, so zero. Okay. <laughs> All three of you 
just as you're getting, you know, getting to a point where you can kind of turn around and look for one another, of course, Mo, you're way too far away for, you know, to see anybody. But um, just as, as Chris is turning around towards Peaches, uh, both of you and, and of course, Mo are dropped to your knees, to your hands and knees as the earth shakes right under you. Nice. Okay. Um, you see a, 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 a bunch of silt, um, uh, kind of, kind of go past you. Um, and, and it covers you and, and blinds you, uh, for a minute. You're, you're not able to see out of your, out of the glasses on your diving bells. And, mm -hmm. um, uh, anyway, this silt kind of goes past you and, and settles, but it came from the late, late, late show. Oh, I mean, uh, <laughs> it came from this direction. Are all of you seeing that? Um, our came from bottom of the page. Yeah. Uh, right. well, I started drawing it right next to the drama card. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Do you I mean, see, see you that? Pointing down. Yeah. You're yeah. pointing down towards the bottom of the page. Yes. Yes. Um, anyway, that silt it, it originated from there and pushed out in, in your direction. Okay. And after probably about 30 seconds, you're, you're able to get back to your feet pretty easily. Um, uh, and that silt more or less settles. Now, Thuban, uh, you're on top and, uh, as you're, as Jock is basically trying to find his way around the plane so that he can get back into the, the standard door, um, the water all around the plane, for about as far as you can see, begins to ripple for about 10 seconds, okay? And, and then it eventually starts to calm down. But the seaplane is kind of bouncing back and forth, uh, at that point, it's like uh, it's almost like a very large ship uh, went by you. Now, I'm sorry, Robert's not here, but Dogfight does report to anyone who can hear him now that he's got his diving bell off um, that there is a ship coming your way, and it, it looks like a, a rather large barge. So for, for you guys, you, you can kind of hear that through, through the communications, but it's kind of weak because it, uh, dogfight would be yelling through the superstructure of the plane so that it could be heard over the radio. So you get a very quiet warning like that. So what do you three on the bottom of the ocean want to do? Uh, I guess it's time for us to head up. Yeah, is there anything in that uh anything in there that you need to take? What caused that uh explosion over there? Oh, uh it was an explosion. explosion. Or what caused that dust oh, to be it was the thing that was seeing the possibilities. Are you sure? No. No, it wasn't. Because it came from way oh. down towards the bottom of the map. Oh, oh, I was thinking of the wrong explosion. But my character, as I thought, would be talking. You're talking about the machine explosion, which got rid of all the enemies and all that stuff. As a matter of fact, once you get back to your feet and have your vision above your silt, both Peaches and Chris can see this. You watch as the machine turns a really beautiful color of white. And you can actually, uh, both of you can actually feel warmth through your suit. And I really started, you know, getting my emergency rockets kind of going. Okay. I'm like, nope, 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 that nope. thing's going to blow. Well, what, what you're doing as you're watching is the infernal machine is slowly sinking into the seabed. And it's taking parts of the pirate ship with it. Actually, it has put on, I'm not going to say on fire, but it has put to smolder a lot of the parts of the pirate ship that are immediately around it within, say, three meters. But it it's, itself is melting into the crust of the earth. <clears throat> what do you guys want to do? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's time, guys. It's time to go. <laughs> okay. All right. Are, are we sure we got the whole thing? I mean, what happened south of us? 
Um, you don't know. You haven't gone to investigate. Yeah. Uh, I mean, if people are still dying because of this machine and we didn't finish the job, come right. on, guys. That would be All a right. waste of time, wouldn't it? Yeah, y'all, y'all, y'all go, go see what you can find. Uh, I'm, looking, <laughs> I'm looking for my torpedo pistol and my sun blade. <laughs> okay. Uh, give, me a, give me a fine test for one of them. Yeah. All right. We'll, we'll start with the torpedo pistol since I said it first. Okay. Dang that. Oh, there it is. Uh, no, you would, uh, you're not disconnecting because find is a universal skill, but mm -hmm. unless you want to spend a possibility or a card, uh, oh, uh, the, the, uh, combat is over. So all cards go back into your hand. In the cause on where find is a contradictory skill. Mm -hmm. yeah, unfortunately, Skeletons can't be intimidated, and that's what we kept up the entire time. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and, and that's what I'm best at. So, it's... yeah, cards. What cards? Uh, all right. So, uh, all right. So, yeah, yeah. God, that torpedo pistol got in. Who knows where they got off to? So uh, then, then I'll look for the sun sword explosion coming through. What's that again? A special gotcha. explosion coming through. You probably got shifted miles. Yeah, who knows? Uh, you could have mine. Uh, well, there's a bunch more upstairs. I mean, they should just be laying right here at my feet. Mm -hmm. I hadn't moved. <laughs> and, and, uh, okay. uh, but, I, but I'm also slow as dirt, so I'm just letting them go do the checking out. because yep. You're slow as dirt. It'll take me a week to get over there. Now, Peaches and Chris, you yeah. are able to go ahead and, and use your rockets in a directional fashion, but <laughs> uh, if you if you want to try and use those in a directional fashion to fashion to see what's going on, uh, what happened with the explosion, um, I'm going to need a maneuverability test uh, or flight. If either of you has, uh, well, let's see, page seventy nine. Let me. Oh, wait a minute. I've got a skill list right here. I don't need to do that. Nah, 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 nah. Uh, air vehicles would be the, the appropriate roll, and it cannot be used unskilled, but you could also roll a dexterity. Would water vehicles work? Um, you know what? Water vehicles would work. Because she's actually skilled in that. Well, give me a, give me a roll. She's better than you were. Let, let's see. But she is skilled in water vehicles, so I'll give it a shot. Okay. Uh, Chris, are you going with her? Uh, no. No? Okay. It's not a mishap, but you pick up on your rockets, and you uh -huh. move about this far. <clears throat> so here's, in my mind, she starts going up, spins around, and then just starts cascading, dragging herself through the dirt. <laughs> Maybe a bit. stop this stop 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 it's it's no, not probably. it's not quite the same thing <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it didn't look graceful at all that's for sure no no but you landed you didn't fall you landed okay <laughs> now uh chris what were you saying did you want to go with her no no so you're just going to boost for the top Okay, it's going to take you probably about um, probably about three rounds to to actually get up there, um, and you're not. What we need to do is kind of test for the bends and stuff like that. So, uh, peaches, are you going to try again? Yeah. Okay. Definitely. Then give me just a moment. <laughs> give, me, give me just a moment, Mo. Do you want mm -hmm. to try and find your sunblade then, or do you still want to try and find your torpedo pistol? No, uh, no, I'm, I'm going to give up on the torpedo pistol. Okay, uh, I will just look for the uh, sunblade. Okay, so uh. go ahead. Isn't it lit? No. Okay, you find it. All right. Ha! All right, that fell pretty much where I thought it did. Okay, uh, now are you just boosting up? 
once you recover that and clip it to your belt or whatever? Uh, I, I was going to start walking south to see what beaches had found. I, I said we, we need to check to make sure that we've we've completed this mission. Otherwise, people are still going to die. Okay. Uh, well, uh, Mo, go ahead. So then. You so actually have air vehicles. You could use that. Uh, I'm just rockets. walking. Okay. <laughs> I'm just I'm just walking. <laughs> uh, do you want to give me a maneuverability check to see if you can oh. get any extras? Yeah, let's see if I can go any further. Ten. Oh, that was on twenty, and then it rolled over. Okay, so eighteen. Um, no, you don't get any extra movement, but you can move. Uh, I believe it's three squares for you. Mm hmm. Only two, really, because I had to go over the top of that beam, or did that beam fall apart? No, nope, 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 nope. You you had to make it over the top of that, so right. you're good to go. All uh, right. Well, uh, so, I'm starting to walk that way, and I keep seeing peaches like bounce along the bottom and then come flying back over. And <laughs> it's not quite that bad. I'm like, I'm, I'm like what, what did you find, peaches? <laughs> Can't stop it. Found the hot tub. There's no off button. <laughs> well, they're called emergency rockets. I mean, it's, <laughs> Okay, so Peaches, do you just want to move along? Yeah, I'll just move along. That was unsafe. Okay, so go ahead and, and roll your maneuver. See if you get anything extra out of it. Maneuver or, yeah, I'm better at maneuver. Maneuver or dex, yeah. Nice, but not nice enough to give you any extra. So one half whatever your move is, which I believe is eight, so you get four spaces. So one, two, three, four. So um, let's see. Here's what we're going to do. Um, unless you guys want to keep rolling maneuver each turn, uh, we'll go with your basic movement. Yeah, let's just go with our basic movement. It is... Uh, we, we can speed it up, you know. Yeah. How so, many rounds are we going to have to walk south in order to find this thing? Um, to the edge of the map. Um, and I'm serious about that. Okay, so Mo, what is your actual move? My actual move in this outfit is five. Okay, so you'll move five, and then Peaches will move, uh, I believe it's still eight for you, Peaches? Uh, I don't know. What is my move? Hang on. Let me let me pop you open here. Take a look. It's not that good, I don't think. Okay, it's it's a move of eight. So yeah. Okay. So yeah, you've got uh you've got a move of eight. You can move eight squares. So you guys go ahead and make one round of movement out of that eight squares. Uh this right here, by the way, is oh. coral. It's a coral reef. Or, or not so much coral reef, but you're going to have to go around it. Oh. Or else so you're going to wind up with suit tears and all kinds of stuff. Two, three, five, six, seven, eight, ten moves there. And you have a massive manta ray that pops out from the silt uh, that is remaining right beside you and, f and flies away along the bottom. As a matter of fact, Mo, you'll see it in about 10 seconds. So, <laughs> yeah, I'm sure it looks like a piece of disgusted laundry, like a cloak walking across the ground. Yeah, I've seen those like that. Yeah. Yeah, they, they typically only attack if you step on them or mess with them. And that is something I'm decidedly not trying to do. Yeah, exactly. So, leave it unknown. Peaches, um, you'll be one square away from the bottom of the map. And I'm going to call that good enough on your next move. So, here's what we're going to do. Um, we're not going to move anymore. I'm going to try and explain to you what you see. Okay. Okay. That large piece of coral that you just passed, mm -hmm. you see, you, you're kind of looking down uh, into a crevasse, and there is what appears to be a pair of legs and a waist 
that was cut off uh, when the infernal device uh, went and did all of its lightning and whatnot. <clears throat> um, so you um, you also see it, as you're looking around, kind of sh flashing your light, that there appears to be a pair of arms, an extraordinarily large head, and a torso to your right, laying across this rock face that's right here. And all of it, all of those parts are made of coral. And more than likely, what happened to knock you to your knees was this thing being cut in half and the top part landing on the on the rock. The uh some kind of granite feature? Uh not a granite feature, a coral feature. This thing was made entirely of coral. And it's it's now got a body all draped across it. Is that what you're saying? Or is the body also made of coral? The the whole thing. Body and legs. The I think there's an SCP like this. <laughs> there might be. I, I, I'm, I'm describing what I see, and I'm quite confused. I've never seen anything like this. Nope, nothing it's, this it's, large. <laughs> this thing is at least, the, the body on it is at least eight meters long. A huge coral being? A coral what giant. Co coral what colors coral. are these coral beings? I describe the color as best I can in the water. Okay, uh, you would have coral to get colors. up really close, but there is coral of various colors and whatnot, but this seems to be coral that is almost devoid of color. I was going to ask if it was red and blue. Uh, no, <laughs> no, oh, I could have done that, but no, it, it, it it's almost devoid of color because um, I, I'm just going to go ahead and tell you it was also created by gibber fat to oh. come and crush you it was going to come and, and kill you and oh was... he made he made a coral golem a column a, a column oh you've got to be kidding me oh beatings <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay has been crushed this is good news so peaches you go to describe uh, this to others and the colors and everything like that and and Mo, you're still trying to make your way down there and Chris, you are already back on top of the the seaplane and you see the approaching boat also. You see that there are a bunch of bad guys atop it that have machine guns and there is one particularly large bad guy, who has a who is at the yoke of a really large machine gun and then there's another even larger guy behind him with his arms crossed and folded in front of him oh and he seems to be wearing the headdress of a pharaoh oh shice <laughs> do, do do you say something <laughs> Uh, I there. think Emperor Mobius is here. Oh, we still got to get out of here. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, time, time to go. You got any juice left in your escape boots? Well, now oh, yeah. it's time to find out. <laughs> yeah, you, uh, you guys definitely have juice in, in those escape boots. You can. All right, I'm then. Just if any of you guys have seen He-Man, the opening of like all the episodes when Skeletor throws his head back and laughs uh, and or uh -huh. gets cries, mm -hmm. Mobius is doing that right now, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Uh, no, no, actually, to be honest with you, the face, you don't, actually, you don't even see the face on Mobius. Yeah, that's the aesthetic. Yeah, right. Because he's got a mask. But from the accoutrements that are on his uh on on the ephod he's wearing and uh the pair of really nasty webley pistols that he's wearing on his hips um you can pretty much tell who this is yeah you can tell he's in charge mm -hmm. now i'm on my way 
Here's the bad part. Um, at, 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 at least for you guys. Um, the, the big guy behind the machine gun is not aiming for you, but he does start shooting up the, the tail, uh, fin and the rudder or the, of, well, our... the, of, of the seaplane. Yep. Until they fall off. This sets the seaplane in a really bad place. It's actually starting to take on water. What do you want to do? Uh... <laughs> okay. uh, is Mobius still there? Uh, yes, of course Mobius is still there. The, the, the barge is kind of approaching pretty quickly. Uh, let me get you guys back to a spot. There we go. Okay, uh, and I need to move everyone over because I need to go back and change your uh, your tokens back to where they're supposed to be. So let me do that. How do you guys that are up top want to act about this? First thing I do, seeing the large hordes of evil people coming at us, I just kind of float over to everyone else. You know, there's not much to know about what's going on or who that person in the weird bit of cloth over his face is looking very angry. I'm just going to do this to help protect everyone. So I'm just going to ward enemy on all of us. Oh, okay. Yeah, go ahead. <clears throat> See how, how, how well you do. Now I'm, That's I'm, a good success. So plus two to all defenses. Yeah, I'm, I'm still making some changes here. Did we all get back in the plane? Uh, yeah. or, not yet. Not no. yet. Oh, okay. Uh, Peaches and uh, Mo uh, are going to come up after the. I figure out what these guys want to do. Okay. Okay. Um, uh, if, if, they're, if they're harassing the plane, I, I'm probably going to try to come up and like hold their boat from below. <laughs> yeah, you might end up breaking your neck. Good. That's <laughs> what I got a torpedo yeah. pistol for. <laughs> Okay. And torpedo grenades. I don't have any. I didn't bring any grenades. No. Okay. I'm trying to get dog Chris fight in here. Okay. So uh, let me, while I'm trying to figure out what's going on with, uh, with dog fight, let me figure out if I can, uh, how well you rolled. And of course, what happens? Roll it's 20. a good result. Roll 20 has slowed down drastically. Okay, what is the target number for... It's 10, so 10. it's a good result. Everyone gets plus 2 to defenses against supernaturally evil creatures. Hopefully that includes High Lords. Um, yes, High Lords are supernaturally evil creatures. Uh, I'll, I'll give you that one. Somebody get on one of those surviving machine guns and lay into him. You could try and fight like that if you want. Well, uh, he killed our plane. We can't take off. Well, do you want to find out what's uh, what's maybe going on? Because you guys are kind of exhausted, kind of beat up. Yeah. So. Uh, we're not even back to the surface yet. So. That's... Yeah. All right. Um. What. Well... I, I don't know if there's much we could do. Does anyone know who the hell this guy is? Um, <laughs> definitely a bad guy and uh, defend yourself. Fight. Well, yes, that's what I'm doing. I'm busy weaving, uh, <laughs> weaving the power of my goddess into you, everyone. Did I hear somebody say fight? I mean, given... In character, I'm not sure we know how dangerous the dude approaching us is. Well, do I. let's let's put it this way: you guys are outnumbered three to one before you even get to the big guy behind the machine gun and the bigger guy behind him. Are we still in Orosh axioms? You are still in Orosh axioms. And oh, wait a minute! Guy. No, no, you're not. You're back in core Earth axioms. Is That's that big wrong. guy Thule? I'm sorry, what? Is that big guy Thule one of them? No. He has good food, you know, bite us on the butt. <laughs> no. 
No. Okay, if you guys want, really want to go into combat, we can do no, that. No, 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 no. I don't think that would work very well. Also, we're all kinds of screwed up. Okay, so... The I'm barge... just going to keep the ward enemy going, just in case. Okay, the barge approaches... Uh, and I don't have a picture of the barge, but uh, let me just tell you, it 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 gets about this close. Okay, All it, right. it kind of comes alongside the craft, and you uh, instantly, oh well, almost instantly, they've got to figure out how to get in yet. Uh, a bunch of shock troopers come in, and they have their weapons aimed at you. Uh, some of them work to trade places with you. Um, Thuban, you're at the back. Um, they, you can feel the vibrations of these guy of like three of these guys aiming um, uh, machine guns at you, while another one tries to slip around or under your tentacles or whatever to get to the rest of the crew. Uh, wait, 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 wait! Hold on, hold on. Everyone, in an orderly fashion, form a queue. <laughs> form a queue. Now, you've still got um, Chris on top with Dogfight. And and both Dogfight and Chris have a lot, including the big machine guns, or big machine gun that the, the one big guy has, uh, aimed directly at you guys. Okay. <laughs> On what uh, planet? <laughs> I'm here. Uh, it's time to hear Paul's best Doctor Doom impression in a bit. Uh, I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I'm kind of have to just raise my hands up and you know the surrender sign. Yeah, go ahead. Go yeah. ahead. We 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 are we are outmatched at this point. Yeah, I I put my hands up. No okay, kind look around. Uh, Nobody ever writes a specific scene in these adventures for <laughs> when you guys win, but still lose. Okay. <laughs> so, um, okay, so you guys basically surrender, including Jacques. Okay. Um, uh, I bet I'm, he's crying over his plane. Uh, he is. He he's not very happy. And. Yeah, but he also has the excuse that we held him at gunpoint, which we did. We kidnapped him. Now, Peaches and Mo, you can come up on this side of the airplane if you want. Okay, you could boost out of the water and land on the wing uh, like the others did. Okay? Uh, okay. If you want. Or uh, you can go over to the barge directly. Uh, my, my question is, instead of boosting out of the water, can we just surface there and, like, hide next to it? Next to what? The barge or the plane? The plane. Okay. So, that when, so that when they eventually take all of our friends prisoner and, like, leave with them, we can then go back onto the plane. I can get my rocket ranger suit and we can conduct a daring rescue next game. Well, actually, that's not going to happen. Uh, this has been written out very specifically. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, th this is this is my way of showing you guys that uh, that uh, you don't win everything. All right, so uh, some of this I'm going to have to ad lib a little bit, and some of it's just going to just going to fall through the cracks because I wrote it very specifically. The last few days have proven exhausting. You and your companions are prepared for a long and peaceful rest. The moment you're home. So, why does it feel as if you're still not finished? As if one more shoe is yet to drop. This might be the result of suffering under so much strain and having been wary of the next piece of trouble, but the pull here is stronger than you felt yet. The boots you're wearing, part of your heavy dive suit, are ready to propel you to the surface and already have on activation. Your ascent would take about 25 minutes, technically. I had it be three mm -hmm. rounds to cut it down. That way, uh, ascending any faster would cause you the bends, which is pain you do not want. As you ascend uh, and the sunlight begins to filter th through from the surface, brightening slowly and flashing with the movement of the waves, and obviously this is not going to happen to Chris and Dogfight and Thuban, uh, 
Um, something else comes into view apart from the hull of the seaplane above. A large flat boat or small ship's hull blocks some of the light from above, closing on the surface the definition of bodies and heads of people looking over the side, as well as a half dozen bodies in the water, long shafts extending from uh, outstretched hands and arms solidify. Are those spear guns? You have visitors. You may as well greet them properly and hope they are friendly or at least willing to shoot after asking questions. Um, so this is n apparently this is not going to happen because you and Peaches are hiding. Mo and Peaches are hiding next to the seaplane, but there are a lot of divers in the water. Okay, with regular diving gear, um, or at least Tech Twenty Three diving gear, Tech Twenty. Um, let's see, what you're wearing is actually like Tech Thirteen, but it's been upgraded with weird science devices. Uh, let's see. You pass over. Uh, you pass over from one, from the seaplane to the flat boat, and immediately end up on your knees. Um, for those of you who are still wearing your diving bells, uh, your head clangs against the the deck, too heavy for you to hold up. Those things weighed about 35, 40 pounds, without the buoyancy provided by the sea. Unfortunately, more than a dozen Nile shock troopers um, level their weapons at you, forcing you to raise your hands in capitulation as much as possible, lest you be shot. No, no, a deep commanding voice calls out from behind you all. This is not how we treat guests, gentlemen. The shock troops smirk, at least, some of them smiling maliciously as all lower their firearms. Uh, can I at least take this uh, helmet off so I can at least look? properly don't interrupt me boy sorry sorry it's just heavy can't see all you in all your glory <laughs> uh -huh. so when you say that you hear silence from uh from dr mobius and uh he says help them with their gear thank you oh gl glorious lord Oh, Don't be this is with one me. of the High Lords. <laughs> Don't worry, gentlemen. They're leaving momentarily anyway. Now, turn and see your master. Though your guts are telling you not to turn, you realize you don't have much of a choice if you want to live. Standing at arm's length for most of you, smug hatred rolling off him is Dr. Mobius, High Lord of the New Empire of the Nile. As one troop's hand rests on a shoulder, two other troops begin untying the leather straps of your suit, and eventually you see your own clothes emerge from beneath. All the while, Mobius yammers on about how you ruined his plan to beat the Gaunt Man to, uh, to becoming the Torg, how angry he is about this bad turn of events and how he should kill you for your meddling. However, I'm going to use you to achieve one more necessity. Are you ready to tread water once more? With this, he turns, raises an oversized large barrel pistol over his head, aiming it at the seaplane, and fires a magnesium flare accurately into the starboard cupola. Bu uh, cupola bubble toward the middle rear of the aircraft. Though the fire does not ta begin immediately, you imagine it won't take long. Then it occurs to you, where's Captain Lafleur? Actually, Captain Lafleur is with you. Um... No, Captain LaFleur would have hidden. Hmm. Anyway, the shock troops... I, I wrote that wrong. The shock troops then push each other, uh, each of you overboard. Regardless of your strength, uh, your fight to stay on board proves futile, and you still find yourself becoming wet yet again in the ocean over the sunken pirate ship where you saved the world. The motors of the large boat kick in, their throaty rumble filling the air with noise as the large vessel begins to turn away. You beat me today, but you also stopped something that could have been catastrophic to my race for power, and so I will keep you alive. A favor for a favor. However, if we meet again, Mobius calls out, floating above the boat on jets, attached to his back somehow, I will remember your perfidy, and you will pay for it. Good day. Oh, thank you, great glorious lord! With oh, that... Before you, before you leave, the god man sent someone here. I just thought you ought to know. You're actually screaming these things after? Mm, 
Kind of. I mean, I make sure he's finished talking this time. Trying to cause discord among the High Lords. Don't mind me. (laughs) Okay, uh, do you actually say those things? I don't know. (laughs) Make a decision. (laughs) Right now, I'm scared to death of losing my character. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) With good reason. Mm -hmm. I don't say that. Okay, Chris, what about you? I'm making sure he, he waits until he's finished talking, okay? Okay, and then what do you say again? Uh, thank you, Great Glorious High Lord. He kind of chuckles under his breath and continues turning away, firing his jets so that he can go towards the larger vessel away from the flat vessel that you've just been on. Oh, let's see. In, Mobius boosts into the air, and the tug-sized vessel completes its turn, revealing a much larger tender ship, cranes massive spooled chains and ropes in the distance. Mobius lands mere moments later, and the ship begins its turn, not waiting for the launch. Now crewed by shock troops alone, who kick up the speed on the motor rapidly, churning the water around you and kicking it up into your face. Turning to see the seaplane, you notice it's already begun listing to starboard, and... If you need to retrieve anything from within, such as safety vests or floating seat bottoms, you'll need to swim quickly to do so. Having retrieved any useful items left behind, you get out in time for the seaplane to disappear beneath the waves. Captain Lafleur tried to save the seaplane, and, for a moment, you tried to help, but eventually talked him into leaving. The swim toward Chris, uh, not Christmas Island, it's another island, I've got to rewrite that, um, toward uh, Indonesia... Okay, Uh, using Jacques reckoning for range and direction is arduous, though, within the uh, is arduous, though, within the half hour, a U.S. Navy destroyer appears over the horizon and eventually sends large rubber boats to pluck you from the water. Oh, thank you for rescuing us. Would you like some of this shark soup we cooked? Yeah, (laughs) it's shark fin soup. Yeah, yeah. soup. Okay, uh, that didn't exactly come out the way that it was supposed to. Uh, I just kept reading. Um, So, it's not a U.S. Navy ship that comes to get you. Okay, and I I really need to rewrite that because that's just... I need to... Before I release this again. It's uh, some ships uh, that are marked Silicap. C-I-L-A-C-A-P. And... uh, they are the Silicap police. They saw the fire from the from the ship, or from the the seaplane, and they saw the large tender ship uh, turning around to go away. So they came to investigate what was going on, and and then detected the seaplane was on fire. <sighs> now, I have a way to get you back to land, but I want to wait on that. Until we are ready for the next adventure. This adventure has endeth. Yay! Yay! Oh, yay! Okay. We survived! Yay! We, we survived! I actually have a question here. Sure. If one would play a Romans card on a High Lord, what would happen? Nothing. High Lords cannot be romanced. Okay. Until you're high enough level to do it. What about the darkness devices? The darkness devices? Um, No. No, you can't. You don't even know that there are darkness devices. Right, right. Because those are hidden as normal objects. Like, um, what is it? Wreck Packin uh, is a large black obsidian spear. Um, right, Daiku Roku is just a laptop. Daiku Roku is a laptop. Uh, Pharaoh Mobius. Um, uh, oh, I can't Captain remember the Fury name. Captain Idol. Yeah, yeah. Uh, is is literally a, a, a Nefertiri Idol. So, okay. So let's see completion. All right. Uh, all players should have shuffled their pools back into their hands if necessary. Uh, if you have, okay, we're not worried about that. Go ahead and discard all of your cards. Um, and then we'll get into ending an act because that's what it says. Uh, Including uh, Cosm? Yes. All of your cards. Go ahead and do that. 
Okay, and I will I'll I'll get rid of all that stuff in a minute because we're you know hmm? I was considering playing Mark of Terror when we encountered Jibberfat, and I think that the weird thing that would happen to the band is he would turn white instead of green. Probably play after witnessing some horrible event or creature. Your character gains a uh, physical mark, such as a white streak in his hair. Oh, yeah. Didn't you have one of those before? No, that was the mark his... Of my darkness but... perk. Okay. He, he, that was when he was playing uh, Dogfight by Proxy. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Okay. I decided against it. <laughs> okay. So, hang on. Let me get all these cards out of the way. Um, <clears throat> okay. Here's what I'm going to do. Oh, there's another one. Of course, I'll have to shuffle all these. Well, if we get over to to the other place within the month, uh, it won't be too bad. I can close that and open that. Okay, so ending an act. Um, all of your cards are gone except for your hand pool cards. Uh, characters with fewer than three possibilities are automatically returned to three. So if any of you have less than three possibilities, go ahead and put those back. I have seven, so okay. Well, we're we're gonna we're gonna take care of all that in a minute. If you have more than three possibilities, you get to keep them in my game. Uh, for ending the act, uh, you get five XP. So you guys should have earned a total of fifteen XP from this game so far, but you've got more coming. So. Just hang on to that. Uh, all characters regain all shock, and you're going to recover. You're going to pretty well. No, don't recover your wounds yet. Don't recover your wounds yet, but you can recover all your shock. Uh, let's see. Old Cosm cards. Okay, don't spend your XP yet because you got more coming. Ending the adventure. Uh, all players turn in their cards. All characters gain an additional five XP for completing the adventure. But here's what I'm going to do. Because Thuban could not join you down in the water, um, because Roll20 gave us basically three um, three episodes of crap, um, <laughs> I'm going to give you an additional 5 XP. So for completing all three acts, that's 15 XP, and then you should have an additional 10 XP, so a total of 25 XP from this adventure. Uh, so from this session, we get the standard five XP. Yep, and then and from, another ten. Another ten for completing the adventure. Wow. Okay, for you guys having to put up with so much garbage, including mine, um, you you get that extra XP. Now, um, any player desiring to take advantage of the possibilities for XP exchange. That's detailed on the advancement page. So I'm going to open the advancement page, table of contents, and then advancement right there. Let me pop that open, and I'll show it to all of you, show players. Do all of you see that come up? Yep. yep. Okay, good. Then in that case, uh, advancement is, is pretty simple. It explains to you about attributes, skills, and perks. Um, and then... Uh, your how you know what where your clearance levels come from. None of you are going to reach 200 XP tonight, so we're not going to worry about that. And then at the bottom is my house rule for possibility conversion to experience points. That's As a fun. note, I'll be taking advantage of that possibility exchange rule to give three of the overflow possibilities for nine extra XP. Okay, so you still had over three. Yes, okay. I have seven. Okay. Chris, have you decided to make any improvements? <clears throat> uh, yes, I increased my spirit by one. Nice. This now, wait a minute. What is your current spirit at? Because as a human being, you cannot exceed 16. Oh, or, it's I'm sorry, nine. 13. 13. Nine? Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. That's, that's it, excellent. It's nowhere near. So if you increased your spirit to nine, did your shock go up? By one. Uh, let's see. Yes. Okay. Good. 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 Um, Mo, you're next. All right. I have increased my um, dexterity 
from six to seven. Oh, bless you, sir. That means you move a little bit faster. So your movement should be 721. Yep. Okay. And did it change? I didn't even look to see if it changed. Well, but, I, don't, uh, I don't know. All right, did you already log out or something? Nope, you're there. No, no, I'm still there. I, I just was on the other page. Okay. Uh, yeah, it, it automatically changed to 721. Okay, good. Uh, and your all of your other dex based skills should have changed as well. Yes, they all changed. Okay, now, uh, Peaches. Yes. Yeah. I got a new perk, Adaptable. The Adaptable. one that uh, uh, court others don't ca get uh, cause contradictions from using spells, tech, or other things that they pick up in other realms, even if it's not their reality. Um, mm -hmm. What is that, like the first one for act or something like that, Connor? Oh... Uh... I'm not sure how that actually plays out, but I I think it's uh, so. Useful. Peaches, do you already have the Realm Runner perk? Uh, yes, yes, I do. Okay, so yeah, uh, nice, very nice. At least let me double check to make sure I do. I'm pretty sure I do. Oh no, no, I don't. I guess I'm Realm Run Realm Runner first, not adaptable. Yeah, you'll have to purchase Realm Runner first and then adaptable. I wanted to up a couple of skills, find uh, melee, and I wanted to add a skill. And I wanted to, I haven't done that yet. I wanted to talk to you about it. Okay. Um, lock picking. Simply because I have smashed through doors. I have jimmied them with screwdrivers. <laughs> I have done everything. Every door that's ever been locked. It seems like I'm the one who's trying to force it open this game just by happenstance. Yeah. So I think by now she might figure out exactly with a little bit of skill at this on how locks work. And if that doesn't always work, if that, and if lock picking doesn't work, she can always just whack at it with her axe. Um, yeah, that's that's kind of pretty true. You're still dragging that axe around, huh? Mm, yeah, she's kind of emotionally <laughs> attached to that. <laughs> okay. All right. I, but, I don't um, see why that wouldn't make sense. Uh, if you want to pick up lock picking, um, there are no prerequisites to it, to the best of my knowledge. Um, but that's the one that you could not use unskilled. So, correct. so you put a point into it, it'll cost you a point. As for what I want, as for what I want to purchase, huh? I am going to purchase a perk. I'm going to wait to hear back from you until whether or not we make any modifications to spell researcher. If you want to nullify that outright, I w or delay until you could decide on a decision to make with that, I will pick esoteric spell instead. Esoteric spell. Um, okay, let me let me kind of look on that one again. Uh, goodness gracious! Doesn't esoteric spell allow you to pick something from outside uh, your cosm? Yes. Now, are you guys basically done improving your characters altogether? Uh, I'm, 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 is, it, is it okay if I take some time to think over exactly which uh, adds to buy? Sure. Sure, I don't okay, see why not. Yeah. Um, and, and I just need to have your characters done and ready to go prior to the beginning of the next adventure, uh, my next adventure, um, so that... Uh, so that I can get proper opposition set up for you guys, okay? Right. Because the the stuff that that uh, Ulysses Spiela has given us is extraordinary, extraordinarily weak. Is, is that Robert? Am I hearing oh, no. a Robert? Nope, I guess not. Um, anyway, so I have to go back and kind of retool the characters because you guys' power levels are are kind of getting off the charts now. Um, uh, but I go back with the opposition tool and I figure out where you guys are as far as stage one through 12 or zero through 12. And, uh, then I apply appropriate opposition that, uh, that will equal your total points for the things that I measure. Okay. So I just need to have it done probably by the end of September. Um, Okay, does anybody else have any other questions? We're not done yet. I just want to know if you guys are finished with your characters for the night. Uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah. Uh, with that taken care of, I'm going to head out for tonight because it's 12.15. Uh, well, at 
hang on oh, a minute. I'm sorry. trying to, to get some things done. Uh, okay. uh, just to make sure everybody is aware, I'm taking the rest of this month to try and get things set up on Foundry. Character sheets, uh, cards, e everything that needs to be done for dice rolling and everything like that. I've got a lot of videos to watch and a lot of work to do in that regard. A note about Josh and Thuban. We want Josh back. Josh is a wonderful role player, and we would like to see more of him. Thuban, on the other hand, is way overpowered and evil. Unfortunately, the rules within Torg allow him to be such. Still, Josh is an amazing role player, and we would love to see him back uh, in the game, perhaps with a character a little bit more even-handed. Um, a character that fits better within the story. Our intrepid adventurers completed with their task of overtaking the both the Gaunt Mans and the uh, Dr. Mobius uh, plans. Uh, they were indeed rejected by Mobius back into the sea. A favor for a favor, if you will. Something to be resolved at a later date. And yet, the tension remains. So our Storm Knights are stuck in an airplane that is broken, has the tail shot off, and they have no way to get to land until the Indonesian Navy shows up and rescues them. See what happens for the new adventure of Torg Possibility War.